I am Kelly Byers. I always tell people I'm the meanest 120 pound kid they know. <laughs> High school, I, uh, my number one sport was wrestling. It's a sport that requires a lot of mental and a lot of physical activity. My accomplishments was two time state champion. I had numerous records at our uh, school, like most wins and most wins in the season. <laughs> Whatever it took to win. A lot of people always ask me if I ever get nervous in a race car. And you go to a state title, and there'd be 30,000 people, and there's uh, one mat sitting down there in the middle. And if you screw up, everyone sees it, so nothing compared to that. I am Kelly Byers. And, of course, Kelly Byers had wrestled in the 120-pound class, but now wrestling 3,400-pound race cars. Doing a pretty good job tonight. Top 10, how would you assess the way the night's gone? Uh, car's real good, actually. We were running uh, well in the top 10 until that first stop, and we lost about 11 spots on pit road. So the guys are going to get all back together here, and uh, we, we managed to get back up to 10th place, so uh, we've got a good car. Just got to take care of it here. Still got quite a long ways to go and uh, get the Samaritan's feet uh, Ford Fusion back up front. Spoke with your crew chief, Scott Sabadelli, not too long ago. He said, quote, we're just getting warmed up. He feels like this team has turned the corner. How about you? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we're just, it's about a year now we've been working together and, and we're hitting, you know, in stride. We're, we're both uh, developing a great uh, relationship, friendship. Uh, we know what each other's thinking at all times. So uh, we're building better cars. Everyone's working better. The team's getting, uh, growing up. You know, we had a real young team to start this uh, deal here at the 47 team and they've all grown up together, including myself. So uh, we just want to get back racing here. I know we got a car that can get up there and run in the top five. Well, Doc, we're going to let Kel Kelly go. They're calling drivers back to their cars. And, uh, Mike, the news for next year, this team, they're going to hope to get sponsorship for the full year for Kelly Byers, for JTG Doherty, and they also want, want to run Coleman Presley some. That is the uh, uh, grandson of uh, of uh, Robert or Bob Presley and Robert Presley, son of Robert Presley. To run, uh, Coleman been running late model stock cars, doing a great job. He's won a lot of races at the local level, and now they're going to move up and try this series and uh, get him in there a few races. Good kid. So they have called the drivers to their cars. You see uh, Jeff Burton uh, getting some tape out to uh, work on the area of the window net there. They're going to get in the car and hopefully get these guys cranked back up. We're just 17 laps away from the halfway point. Jimmy Johnson climbing back in. Got to believe when to, once they open pit road, a lot of these guys are going to be able to come on the pit road and make some needed adjustments. Kevin Harvick getting suited back up. Kyle Busch is the leader back uh, hopefully with the cars rolling in just a moment. The NASCAR Nationwide Series at Charlotte is brought to you by the U.S. Navy. And by Aaron's with over 1,500 stores nationwide. Everyone's a lucky dog at Aaron's. Before the cars are fired up and we get this race back underway, check a couple of the news headlines of the week in the NASCAR Nationwide Series announced here that Bernie Lamar and Brian Vickers are going to split the number 32 car. Earlier announced that Dollar General would sponsor that car for Braun Racing next year. Unilever is going to move over from the nine car that they've been sponsoring the last couple of years to Dale Jr.'s team. Ten races for the number five car, three drivers to split it. Junior, uh, Landon Castle, and Mark Martin to share time in that car. And the new Nationwide Series version of the Car of Tomorrow will be tested here on Monday and Tuesday. Along that group, Kyle Busch to test cars for Joe Gibbs Racing. It'll be their first time on the track with that uh, Nationwide Series version of the new car. Take advantage of having a couple, a couple guys that own a team or a piece of a team in the Nationwide Series here to talk about the development of that car for your teams. How much time, effort have you been spending on it? And will you have a car in the test here? No, we won't have a car to test here. And i got a whole different approach when it comes to that, Alan. <laughs> it's kind of like tire testing. Yeah. What I'm going to do is let somebody else test that baby. Okay. Let them spend their own money. Let them crash the cars. Let them tear <laughs> everything up. And when they get it the way they want it, Give me a call and I'll build one. <laughs> but for me being a guinea pig, no way, man. I've been through that before. We, me and Penske and the guys over there, we've went and said, hey, we're going to do some Goodyear tire testing. They make those babies a little too soft. We might tear one up. I knocked the wall down. <laughs> I got tired of sitting in a hospital because I was the guinea pig. Let those cats figure out that car tomorrow, okay? <laughs> I agree with Rusty 100%. I mean, we're, we're not going to run a car either. Thank you that. Yeah, we're going to let them I figure it out. I forget you calling me 60 years old. <laughs> Whoa, close enough. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, we're going to let those guys figure out. And, and just like Rusty said, let them do the work. They're going to do the due diligence. And when we get closer to 2010, we'll look at, you know, getting our cars ready and getting prepared to run those cars in Nationwide Series. But the feedback's been phenomenal. Everyone's really happy with the car of tomorrow, the new race car for the Nationwide Series. So we'll see how it goes. No bump stops. I like that. No bump stops. No bump yeah. stops. They raised that splitter up. The guys went to Richmond. They drove it. They said they loved it. 
Give so, hey, something to ride on. I'm just trying not to laugh because there's two words you could say to get Rusty Wallace Bump going. Stop. Bump stop. Bump <laughs> stop. He'll go crazy. Hey, and, my, and Oprah said 60s the new 40, so don't worry. Thank you very you. much. Uh, just a nice attempt at recovery on your part. Next time you see a shot from the pit studio, I may be sitting in the middle. I'm not sure. So for the second time tonight, these drivers are going to buckle back in. They'll fire the cars up and head them out onto the racetrack. And after NASCAR gets the field all regrouped and gathered up, they will open pit road. And I'm sure we're going to see everybody come down pit road. The question is now, if you're one of these crew chiefs and you've seen this race get stopped by rain twice tonight when there's really not all that much on the radar either time, you got to be debating to yourself, how much longer is this race going to go? Because we get past halfway and it rains again. That could be it. You're exactly right, Alan. I'd be looking at the radar really hard right now. But, you know, we have had some with rain on the racetrack. Precipitation, <laughs> thank you. I know it's a big word. I can't say it. Some rain on the racetrack that hasn't showed up on the radar. So they really don't know what's going on right there. There's a man hard in concentration. Drew Blickett. There's going to be a yeah. lot of rubber, spring rubbers, a lot of adjustments. I believe these guys are going to use this, though, Brad, yeah. to get these cars back handling what about about tire pressures though how hard, how long do we get to run before the tire pressures come up and help someone like Jeff Burton who's bottoming out his race car because the tire pressures work as uh, you could probably hear they have fired the engines they'll be rolling the field off shortly doc and let's see red flag number two hopefully that's the last one on the night huh we hope we are done with red flags here tonight guys hope we can get back to racing here get to halfway as you mentioned these guys are going to come on the pit road and you guys have been in these road you cars and you've been on that pit box what do you do now do you think about maybe just doing some things you wouldn't do until late in the race knowing that if you get one more rain we may be done well you can't predict the weather what you need to do here is just get on the pit road and try to make some positions try to make a good pit stop make a good adjustment and get back to work try to get focused back on the race yeah you just got to get your car as good as you possibly can and go out there and run as hard as you possibly can because you don't know when that may come but you're going to treat it like every pit stop you're going from pit stop to pit stop right now the NASCAR rule is that uh, it is halfway, and then if the weather comes and doesn't go away, it can be a complete race. Not halfway plus one. It is halfway, so here would be uh, 100 laps, and we are 17 laps away. Now, we hope that the weather stays away and we can get the full 200 laps in the night and get it a complete 300 miles here for the NASCAR Nationwide Series cars. Now, the guys are uh, getting ready on pit road to bring these guys down. Got to believe we're talking about four tires and some major, major adjustments. Well, the thing is here, these guys, these pit crew guys have been sitting around getting stiff they need to get stretched out here get ready get some blood flowing get ready to make a quick pit stop no mistakes four tires and a few adjustments and uh, go back to racing yeah that's what you really want is to make up as many positions right here as you possibly can that make your driver happy and get back out there You've got fewer cars to pass when you get to the race uh, back on the racetrack and get the green flag track gonna be tighter uh, did some of them were thinking there was, enough, was there enough rain to wash some of the rubber off I know there's a lot of guys hope it's tighter because <laughs> there was a lot of loose race cars but I think the racetrack will probably stay about the way it was we didn't get a lot of rain uh, the guys that were loose need to tighten their cars up I think right here because I don't think the track's gonna change yeah just some grip I think they're gonna get some added grip even more than probably what they were uh, experiencing earlier so that's going to be a good thing for those guys but as you said they're going to those loose race cars they're going to have to tighten those up because they're going to go faster here once again maybe get a chain and tie yourself to the bumper of Kyle Busch because uh, he has been tough to catch here in the, this first 83 laps he has been tough but there's a couple guys back there Carl Edwards uh, and uh, a few of these other guys that are looking at maybe trying to make a move on him Lined up on pit road. If you just joined our coverage, we have had uh, four different leaders, five lead changes. We've had four caution flags, had two caution flags in the first seven laps. And now the second red flag. You see the NASCAR officials that are there with their hands up. That hand up signifies that the car they are standing by has fired and is okay to roll off. The 22 car we're being told will need an assist off of pit road. Andrew Ranger. So they have called a record to come down and give him as the other cars will move away. And that's the uh, cars that pointed now to go around him. And the caution is out, which means that the uh, pace truck will move away. We talked to Clint Boyer a couple of times there, and he's somebody who's going to have to adjust on his car here because you know, right now as it sits with Carl Edwards up there in the second spot and, and Clint's back in 11th right now, he's cut some points off of that points lead. It would be down to 156, and I know we have racing to go, but he's going to have to work on that car a little bit to get uh, back into that top 10, hopefully top 5. Again, there are four races to go after today. This is the 31st of 35. They go to Memphis at the end of October. They have next week off when the cup cars are in Martinsville. Then they go to Memphis, Texas on November the 1st, Phoenix, and then Homestead, which is the championship weekend on November 15th. Uh, two of the final four 
are on one and a half mile racetracks. See the 22 car is getting a push from the wrecker. They, they make sure that all the cars start up. They don't penalize anybody for uh, not being able to get their car started after these red flags. They'll get them pushed off and let them go back to their position with no penalty. See the 12 car coming by there too, Justin Alga. How impressive was he sitting listening to him? I mean, watching him here today, he's handled everything, uh, all the adversity, trying to make the race uh, in difficult conditions, uh, come out here and done a great job on the racetrack, and then you know, he sat in there and talked to those guys and sounded like he'd been doing this forever. How about last week he's in a, in a borrowed car with a borrowed engine and a family-owned team running ARCA and a great series there in Talladega. Tonight he's driving for the legendary Roger Penske on national television and doing a great job. He did a great job avoiding that last accident too. He he saw it. He sensed it coming. That's good it, racing instincts. When you see that out of a driver. Yeah, between that and grabbing that steering wheel a little bit tighter right there because <laughs> he was expecting maybe to get hit. Pit road still closed right now as they let the field get caught up. They wanted to get the 22 to get in position here. So click off lap 85 this time by. Next lap pit road, it'll be game on. There's a 22 getting back. You see him getting back to his position that he was in when the caution came out. There will be 22 cars on the lead lap. Jamie McMurray was of the lap down and he was the uh, recipient of the free pass. Kyle Busch has led uh, the last 32 laps. When he took the lead, he just set sail, moved away. Back in the spring, sort of the same way. Here's Kevin Harvick, back in fifth position. Hard to believe he hasn't won at this racetrack in nationwide competition or in Sprint Cup. He's won the All-Star race here, won it back uh, last year, back in May. It's hard to believe he hasn't won a race in this series this year, too, because he's been so dominant in this series, and he's still yet to win a race. Yeah, 15 wins the last two years. He won nine two years ago when he won a championship and won a series leading six victories uh, a year ago. Well, he's going to need to make a good pit stop right now to keep himself up there and within striking distance in case they make a bad adjustment or something on that 18 car. Here they will come down pit road 45 miles an hour. Let's go down to Mike Massaro. And uh, Kevin Harvick began the night tight through the center, but after the last round of pit stops, they freed him up a little bit. The car right now neutral. They're just calling for a four tire change, no adjustments, and a can of Sunoco racing fuel. Shannon? Mike, on the last run, Kyle Busch was saying that the car was getting a little tight. Four stickers and Sunoco fuel, no changes for the 18. Jamie, car getting a little tight for Carl Edwards in the 60 to going up. One round on the track bar. Carl reminded him, guys, track position is everything here. Be quick on this stop, Dave. David Reagan gives up six position. He's just losing, just a losing a hair of front grip. Slight air pressure adjustment on those left side tires. Wow, three wide off of pit road, and they finally pair down to two wide. Mike Bliss up seven spots. Leffler up 15. Got to believe two tire stops there for Blaney as well. Vickers. Comes the uh, Stephen Wallace and David Strimmy car off. Look how crazy this race was off pit road. You see Mike Bliss, he goes by, nobody around him, but look at this right here. What a traffic jam at the end of pit road. Cars everywhere. A lot of strategies being pulled here on this one. Ooh. See yeah. a lot of different guys uh, moving up. Some of the guys thinking about the rain maybe coming back. Have to be thinking that because if they watch David Streaming with two tires, they certainly wouldn't think that that's gonna be the strategy that's gonna be good for a long run here. Remy had gotten two tires earlier, came out, picked up a lot of position, about eight spots in the pits, came out 10th, but fell back to 18th then. He had a few more laps on his left side tires than some of these cars will have, so it might work a little bit better, but track position right now is real valuable when you're talking about this close to possibly the end of the race. These are the cars a lap down or more that are uh, Kenny Wallace is down there, coming in on the 28 car. Eric McClure is in. There's Kenny Wallace. And 
Andrew Ranger getting right side tires. He's two laps down. You see the right front tire changer struggled just a little bit to get the tire off. There's the 17 of McMurray. 